In this movie, we're going to talk a little bit about our CSS specifications and look at that content on w3.org. So here I've already pulled up the website, so let's go ahead and go over to the A to Z list again, and we'll see CSS. So if we click on CSS, we're going to find a lot of great information about our cascading style sheet technologies. If you take a look, we have a nice little definition here for CSS, and it's being defined as a simple mechanism for adding style to web documents. Of course, it is a very simple mechanism. However, there are some technical aspects that we'll get into later on that you might not find so simple. But as you work with the technology, it will become increasingly simple. So if you look over to the right, you'll see your local links, including what's new, which will give you a breakdown of some of the new developments in CSS. Then look at CSS compliant browsers, different authoring tools, specifications, test suites, core styles, and other information. Now what we're interested in are these specifications. So if you click on specs, you'll end up getting down to this little area where it's talking about the different levels. Now, essentially, what levels are, are different versions of CSS. Now, each version of CSS builds upon the previous version. So it's not really versions, it's more appropriately referred to as levels. So if we take a look at these different levels, each thing that is in the preceding level is also in the next level. However, sometimes it does modify how those things are treated. But if you look into the CSS level 1, you'll see that it contains properties for fonts, margins, colors, as well as the box model. So if you go ahead and click on that, you'll see that we have our specifications. And if you look here, you'll see that there is a red bordered box. And if you read that red bordered box, it's talking about how the document is no longer maintained and that a new technology is being developed in place of it. We're just looking at this for historical purposes anyway. So if you scroll on down, you'll end up getting all sorts of great information, including a table of contents. Now this table of contents breaks down all the different aspects of CSS Level 1. So a lot of the things we're going to be doing with CSS 2 is, of course, dependent on CSS 1. If I continue to scroll down, I'll see that we have such things as block level formatting, font properties, background colors, margins, padding, border, width, height, different types of display, and that's about it, as well as terminology. So if I continue to scroll down, I'll end up getting into the actual bulk of our documentation rather than just hyperlinks. Now, CSS Level 1 does give us a lot of control over what we can do, but we're going to be working with CSS Level 2. So if I come up back to the top and click on this CSS Level 2, it's going to take me to the CSS Level 2 Revision 1 specification. If I scroll down, I'll end up seeing some more information about this in general, and it's saying that CSS 2.1 builds on CSS 2, which builds on CSS 1. And then it talks about the new additions for CSS 2.1 as it corrects a few errors, such as width and height, and calculations for clip property, and some other requested features. Now if we continue to scroll down, we'll also see a table of contents down here for the specification. And if you notice, there's the quick table of contents, and it goes through and talks about assigning property values, selectors, media types, box model, different types of effects for our visual formatting and generating content, paged information, colors and background fonts, text tables, and user interface. Now if you continue to scroll down, you'll get the full table of contents. So here you can see everything there is to see about CSS 2.1. Now even though the title of this course is CSS2, we are really dealing with CSS 2.1. But if you continue to scroll, you're going to get a breakdown of everything. More or less, we will be dealing with the bulk of this content, but there are some things that this course is not really designed to cover. Some of those things end up being using CSS to control media outside of the web space, 
because you can use CSS outside of browsers, inside of development platforms such as Adobe Air. So those things we're not really going to be covering. Just know that the technology does control things like that. And if you notice here, I'm still kind of scrolling. And whenever I get to the bottom, there we go. <laughs> we now have seen a lot of the things that are available for CSS2. So I do recommend that if you have any questions about things, that the w3.org website is one of the first places that you look whenever you have any types of questions. I'm going to go ahead and go back here and take a look at the specifications for level 3. And of course, level 3 is currently being developed which means it's more or less incomplete, but this is what's currently happening with CSS3. And if you notice here, when you see the candidate recommendation, that ends up meaning that the technology is almost ready to be used. Now, some of these things for CSS Level 3 are actually already available to us by some of the more cutting-edge browsers. These browsers would include Firefox and Safari. These browsers include the properties that are available through CSS3 by adding in a little tag onto the front of that property. Now we will be covering some of these CSS3 modules in an upcoming movie. I just wanted to go ahead and show you that w3.org does in fact have a lot of great information, not only about what we're working with, but also with what's going to be coming out in the future. So that's a real quick look at the specifications for CSS that you can find on w3.org. And like I said multiple times, please take a look around w3.org. You're going to find all sorts of great information, not only about CSS, but other web-related technology.